getting back to that thing about dinosaurs yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, it does it like it feels to me that it's just hard to accept. Like I've, I've heard that um, scientists have found um, teeth marks in dinosaur bones mm -hmm. that match the teeth of Tyrannosaurus. Yep. So, you know, that seems to me like a bit of evidence to back up that Tyrannosaurus was a meat eater. Right. Just a brief comment firstly, and then I'm going to ask a question about your emotion. Right. Um, firstly, most of the things God, God designed in terms of uh, creatures, many of them were designed for cleaning up purposes. Do you understand what I mean by that? Like, most insects, for example, are there to clean up things, to actually you know, decay and break down things that have already died. And many animals that God created also have that role, to actually clean up and break down things that have, have, that have passed on. And if you look at, like in a rainforest, for example, you'll see that's the case. And many of the creatures God designed were designed exactly for that purpose. So the thing with the fossilised record, it's impossible to tell whether the animal killed the other animal or they just ate it as carrion. Mm -hmm. right? and, and so a lot of what you see and what's then assumed, you know, we've got to be careful of what the data is and then what the assumption is. Right? The data is, I see teeth marks in the bone of a, a, a Tyrannosaurus rex teeth marks in the bone of another dinosaur. That's the data. Our assumption then is that Tyrannosaurus rex must have killed and ate that dinosaur. But that's not a valid assumption. Right? And if you think about it, that makes sense, so doesn't it? What you're saying is it was a scavenger. Yes, and in fact, if you look today, almost every, like a lot of the birds, for example, like vultures and a lot of the carrion type of birds, most of them are eating animals that are already died. And in fact, that was their, one of their purposes, was to do that. Is That's to, a good explanation, to because I know in the, in the past, when I've sort of had issues with things that you've said, when I've brought it back to you, you've given me a bigger picture. Yeah. Which enables me to see into it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a good explanation. So I'm glad I brought it up. Yeah. Now let's address the emotion. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be doing with this with all of you today. Um, please don't be afraid to raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, at times you keep getting stuck on intellectual things, and that is taking you away from the emotion. The truth is that explanation that I've just given to you would have come to you as a possibility if there wasn't an emotion inside of you that prevented that from coming to you. Do you follow me? So what was the emotion inside of you that prevented that from coming to you? See, God wants to give you, this applies to all of you, God wants to give you the answers directly. He doesn't want you to have to ask somebody else to get the answers. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. In other words, you can get all the answers from God. Now, those answers will come to you via your soul. And so the question then has to be asked, why didn't that answer come to me via my soul? So that's the question I'm asking you. What do you reckon that might be? What did you feel when I made that statement? Those are the feelings. It didn't feel like it resonated with my own inner truth. Right, so my truth disagreed. Then what did you feel? Um, now before Graham answers, is there any one of you that can feel what Graham felt? Because this is something that all of you are capable of doing. Right? Now be careful, the difference. there's a difference here between feeling what you feel <laughs> and feeling what Graham felt. And the problem is when we begin, obviously, it's hard for us to know the difference. It's like when I say something to you, you will feel that through the filter of your emotions. Right? So your emotions become this, this filter through which everything you hear from me is filtered. And like if, like if you're upset with men, everything I say to you about a woman, and you're a woman, is going to be put through that filter of you being upset with men. 
That makes sense? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to judge what I'm saying to you as if I'm being critical of women. Right? But that, that's not how I feel. It's how you feel through the filter of what's being said. So in Graham's case, his truth disagreed. So that's the first thing. So we're, I think what's the feeling that came up underneath that? I think the first thing that comes to my mind is that probably I wasn't feeling. Okay. I was thinking. So why do you want to think? It's a hard habit to get rid of. It's a hard habit to get rid of, but there's a reason, an emotional reason why you want to think. What's that? What do you think it might be? Not <laughs> trusting. Because you don't trust your feelings, isn't it? So, I cannot trust my feelings. Most people don't want to trust their emotions. They feel they can't. How many of you feel that you can't really trust emotions? That's why you've got to think a lot. Uh, yeah, so it's a pretty common belief, isn't it? Emotions are indeterminate. Emotions are not logical. Emotions are, these are all the messages that we get, right? And the truth is that emotions that are damaging or are based on injuries are obviously are not always logical right now in our life. But they were logical at some point in our life. <coughs> That's the truth. So if you have an emotion right now where you're angry with men, it might not be very logical emotion right now because you might be married to a nice man, right? But... At some point in your life, that emotion was created, so it was logical then. But it needs to be felt in order for you to no longer carry it with you. So, if you feel... This is a big issue for yourself, Graham, actually, if you think about it, because it's something that's come up quite a lot in our discussions together. I can't trust my feelings. My feelings are not able to be trusted, so I've got to think. I've got to be logical. I've got to work my way through this. The truth is that you can trust your feelings, but when your feelings are connected with God's feelings, that's when you can trust your feelings. Now, of course, you're going to have to learn to trust your feelings even before then. Otherwise, you'll never get to the point where they're connected with God's feelings. So, you know what? Every one of us is going to have to do it sometime. <coughs> get used to being wrong. How many hate being wrong? <laughs> It's a terrible feeling being wrong. What normally happens when you're wrong in this world? What happens? Yeah, dumped on, damned, condemned, trashed, judged, criticised. Right? Now, that is not what we want to do here. Right? You're allowed to be wrong. You've got free will. You're allowed to be wrong. That's one of the free things, the beauties of free will. You're allowed to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. But often we don't believe it is because right from a young age, what were we taught? You get it right, boy, or else. Mm -hmm. right? Or girl. You get it right, or else. And what was the or else generally? Punishment. Yeah. So what do we associate with getting things wrong? Pain. Pain, yeah. I'm, if I get something wrong, if I put up my hand right now and say something, AJ, and then I'm wrong... What's going to happen? I'm going to get punished in some way. How many of you feel that? Like, yeah, like quite a few. So it's a common. These are common feelings. These are blockages to us being ourselves. Feeling lesser than too. Constantly, we're always taught that right from a young age, yeah. aren't we? I'm the adult. You're the child. You've got to listen to me. That's it. Why do, you, why do I have to do that, Mummy? Because I said so. <laughs> How many of you as parents have said that? Oh, yes. <laughs> right? And, and because of that, what happens? They don't do it. Well, <laughs> you saying so means nothing, really. But can you see how important it is to start addressing everything emotionally because of those kind of things? And to realise it's all okay. We can all be wrong. We're allowed to be wrong. We can all have painful emotions that we can talk about freely. We're allowed to be embarrassed. We're allowed to be ashamed. 
we're allowed to be, have these feelings and emotions that are in us. If you don't let yourself have those feelings and emotions, what is going to happen is you are going to shut down your emotional processing. Right? And if you shut down your emotional processing, what's going to happen then? Disconnect. You disconnect. You disconnect from yourself. You disconnect from oh, God. God. You're never going to be at one with God. You're never going to be in a state of bliss. And that's what this intellectual stuff teaches you, which is a shame. Right? It's like that uh, logical song, Super Dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when I was young, it seemed that life was so wonderful. wonderful. Magical. But then they showed me a way where I could be sensible, sensible dependable, logical. <laughs> and what happens? <laughs> and what happens? And the song says it really good. What happens is that he tuned out of himself, right? He, he's not himself anymore. And that's what's happened to all of you. All of you, now the construct that we have right in our minds, right at the moment, and this includes me, the construct we have right in our minds, right, right at the moment about ourselves, is actually a fantasy. It's all of these things that have been built up over time that have told us what we are. And now, we don't even know who we are anymore. Nope. Right? And this process of becoming at one with God will also help you to become at one with yourself. So that you now know exactly who you are and what you really feel and what kinds of things you think inside of yourself and why you think them. What emotions are happening inside of here that cause those thoughts to bubble out of you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>